and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to connect the GPT-4 API in Airtable with no code. So GPT-4 is the latest AI language model developed by OpenAI and it's currently only available as an API for developers to build applications and services. There is also a waitlist to access GPT-4 and you can join that waitlist by going ahead over to our blog on our datafetcher.com website and clicking the link here. If you do already have GPT-4, which I'm sure you do as you are watching this video, today we're going to learn how to connect that to Airtable with no code. So we are going to first go ahead and create a blog posts table. So just up here in the left hand corner where it says table one, double click on that and retitle this to blog posts. Nice and simple. Then we'll select save and now it's time to add the blog titles into the name section. So we have some examples on our blog on the website for this or you can paste in your own. So I'm just going to open this up and paste these in here like so. Then we need a formula which you can also find on that blog post just by scrolling down and you can find that here to copy the whole amount and we'll be coming and bringing that back to our Airtable base. Here we're going to retype title this first field as prompt like so and from the drop down menu we're going to look up formula nice and simple here we have a box where we can then paste in that formula just like so and then select the save button and if you've never used AI before, so you don't know how prompts work, we do also have a link to find out some good writing prompts for OpenAI on that blog post as well. Coming back to our base, we're going to create another field. So we'll just retitle this one as introduction. And from the drop down menu, we're going to be looking for single line text then select save. Then next to this, we're going to retitle the following field as introduction formatted like so. And for the type again, we are looking for that formula again, which can also be found back on our blog as well. There's a simple copy button here under this information. Select copy and that copies that full formula. Come back to your Airtable base and paste that formula inside the box. Select save. And now we're going to create a new grid view. So over to the left hand side, you'll see this create grid, select the plus symbol here and retitle this as needs intro. Perfect. Once you've done that, select the create new view. And as you can see, we are brought now into the new grid view. You can check this by seeing that that needs intro is highlighted. Now we're going to create some filters for this grid view. So if you click the filter, these will be our conditions. We want for this to read where name is not empty. So select that add condition and we're going to read where name and from this drop down menu is not empty and we're going to add a second condition. So click the add condition again and introduction is empty. Great, now that we have our Airtable base set up, we can go ahead and install Data Fetcher. So over here in the top right hand corner, we have our extensions option and we're going to select add an extension. The following page will load where you have a search bar in the top right hand corner of this pop up and we're going to search for Data Fetcher here. There we are, it appears. We'll select the add button and then click add extension. Now you have the choice of either creating a free data fetcher account or you can simply continue with Google. We'll arrive to the following screen where we can now create our first request. So select the big blue button and the following will appear. Here under the application, we want to select open AI so we can search for this here click on that. And under authorization, we will now need our open AI key. So here you can simply find this by clicking on the click here button. And this directs us to our open AI account overview where we have our API keys. So I'm going to create a new key. Here we are, select the create key and copy that over. Then we will paste that API key into this input box like so. And for the end point, we're going to select create chat message completion. Now we also want to title this. So up here where it says request one, we're going to retitle this as 
fetch blog introductions, like so. Then we're going to select save and continue in the bottom right hand corner and we arrive to the following screen. Here we have the model option, so from this drop down menu we are going to select GPT-4 and now we need to create an input message for GPT-4. So in this message box we are telling the AI how to create the messages and from what perspective. So for this example, we are going to input the following system. We are telling the AI that it is an expert financial copywriter. And so this is going to save you a lot of time by just initially explaining this to the AI system. But you can read how to create these messages more on that blog on our website. We've got a few examples here. So now that we have this instruction, we'll select enter and it should now look like this. Then we're going to click on the plus button all the way over here in the messages box still to select the right output table and field. So for the table, we are going to leave this as blog posts and for the field, we're going to select prompt. Then for the run for every record in view, we also want to change this to needs intro. Select confirm. And now you should see that information appear in that input box like so. Then we can select save and run in the bottom right hand corner and select continue. Now we arrive to the response field mapping and this is where you can choose which fields you would like to have imported into your Airtable base. So for this example, we are only wanting to turn on the message option, but if you do want to choose any of these other fields, you can simply turn them on by switching the toggles from gray to green, or you can search for any of the fields as well in this search bar here. So like I say, we're just wanting to bring the message option through and we want to map this field to an existing field and we're going to select from the drop down menu introduction. Now we'll select save and run in the bottom right hand corner and as you can see this request is now running. Select show output table and we'll arrive back to the following screen where you can select the grid view and you will now see that that introduction and the introduction formatted has been created for you. So this is amazing that we are able to do this but you would still need to manually run these requests if you wanted to create new blog post introductions however you can set your Airtable up to have this happen automatically by going one step further so in order to do this we would need to use data fetches scheduling tool so just over to the right hand side we're going to reopen that extensions option and that pops up automatically to the request that we have already created. So if we open this up, you can see all of those settings you have already inputted in here. And down at the bottom, we have a schedule option. Now yours will only look like this if you have already upgraded to a paid data fetcher account. If you haven't yet done that, I really recommend that you do because then you can use the scheduling feature for any of the requests that you would like to run through data fetcher. So once you've upgraded to a paid data fetcher account, you can come back and now you will see the schedule option like so, where we are asked to authorize. Select the I understand let's authorize button and we'll be directed to the following page. Here, data fetcher is requesting Airtable access. So if you select the blue button, add a base and then select all current and future bases in all current and future workspaces, click the grant access button. And as you can see, that automatically turns on the scheduling tool. Here you can decide how frequently you would like for your request to run so that you can keep all of your records up to date automatically without you having to do a thing. Once you've done that, you can select save in the bottom right hand corner and then close this window over. So hopefully today you have learned how to connect the GPT-4 API in Airtable with no code, but if you do have any questions, you can always reach out to us here at datafetcher.com, where we also have a full length blog on this exact topic so that you can learn that way as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn today. I really hope you have a good one.